Good morning. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, as Daniel said, my name is Jenny. Um, and it is, it is a pleasure and an honor um, to be able to, to share with you this morning as community, as uh, family, um, as fellow believers, um, and also um, as those who are uh, wearing our identity in Christ um, in front of the world that we live in. So we are in First Thessalonians, um, and our theme this week is love. Now, a um, little bit of a recap from last week. Uh, Stephen shared um, some, some fairly um, contextual information that helped us to understand that faith in the context of Thessalonica at the time was to do with allegiance, it's to do with where, where um, help and provision was expected to come from. So keeping this in mind, um, 1 Thessalonians being written to um, people that at the time would have been identified um, as coming from a pagan background, um, meaning to our sort of simplified understanding, they were neither Jews nor Christians coming from an other religious experience into relationship with Christ. So that's, that's our, our context. Now, the religious system at the time um, encouraged people to access different uh, gods or deities to gain what they needed. So for health, they would go to whoever was responsible for health and um, love and relationship and family and provision and crops and finance. Um, this was part of the societal system, which meant it wasn't um, nearly as individual as our cultural perspective is of where I make my choices and that's, that's for me to figure out, but it, it actually had bearing on the community. So for someone to say, I'm not going to participate in this system any longer, could be seen as very unloving to their community because are they abandoning their family members, their community, to not having the benefits that they would see as coming from commitment or patronage to these particular deities? So this is, this is the context that we're coming into with this conversation and the context where Paul is, is talking to them. Um, and so he's been there, planted the church, um, begun the ministry, and then had to leave very quickly. And so he has sent Timothy with the concern of, is it still going? Are they still there? Is this still happening? Or has it just completely fizzled? And Timothy has just brought back this report to say, it is alive and it is well. This is the evidence. And one of those pieces of evidence is this love. So as we start in, let's start with a question because it helps us to, to dig in. Where does this love that we're talking about come from? You're allowed to shout out, put in your two cents. From God. Yes, from God. <laughs> Jesus, God, the Bible. That's kind of, we always start with those three and then we can dig deeper, right? <laughs> um, just as Bron has shared with us, it is the love of Christ that is expressed, God's love expressed through his son in coming, taking our sins upon him and making a way to be in relationship with God. This is the love. So this love has come. It's come from God. It's also come through those who convicted of that love and experiencing that love brought the message to Thessalonica to share. So it, it brought them. It drove this movement uh, of Paul and his missionary journeys. Um, and in, in our world uh, since then, we have also seen this same love drive many people in many ways um, to, to bring about movement and change, uh, bringing God's word to, to people all over the world. So we've got, we've got this beginning, this motivator, this thing that pushes, begins the momentum of this love, and that is God. And that begins to roll the ball. The next thing that we see, and, then, and if we look Starting now, um, in chapter 1, 
Now, I will warn you, we are going to be looking sort of all through the book in different places and putting these things together in the story. Um, so if you have it to follow along, if not, listen closely, because we're going to hop a little bit here and there. Um, but it is so beautiful, the way that this is woven in. So I hope that you can um, imagine that as we go. So starting in chapter 1, um, Paul has just expressed who is writing, why they're writing, um, and the thankfulness that he has for the Thessalonians. And in this thankfulness, uh, in verse 3, he says, We continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the thing that Paul was looking for. This was what he was waiting for. He wanted to know if this was there, and this is the evidence. There is love. This means that this God is still uh, present and active, and these people are in relationship with him. Love is not just the beginner. It is the identifier. This is what identifies people as being God's people. So we've got the beginning. Now we've got an identifier. The Thessalonians have been identified by their love as people of God. Paul goes on to talk about when they first went. He says, we came to you, um, and we came to you with a spirit that was gentle, not with uh, big words and flashy um, signs and all kinds of power that was of themselves, but we came to you with gentleness. And he uses two pictures. He uses the picture of a mother nursing her child. That is a labor of love. Many of you know that <laughs> because it's not always easy. But this picture of, of tenderness, carefulness, um, desire to, to grow and to, to, to love and then also the picture of a father um, encouraging his child, spurning them on towards growth, to development. These are the pictures that Paul uses for the heart of those who came to plant this church. So this is, love is the identifier of the, the church in Thessalonica. It is the identifier of the servants that God sent to share his word. So they share this. They're on the same ground. Now, as we read on through, it is more than just a, um, a, a nice little flag or a pin that says, God's check mark. I got it. I've got love. I'm good. I have it. Love is a moving and functioning thing. So in Paul's purpose in writing to Thessalonica is to express um, his uh, happiness, his rejoicing that they are following the Lord and that they are living as people of God. But there's also, yeah, now this may shock you, there's also difficulties and disagreements within the church. I know we've never experienced that, so we'll have to use our imaginations. But there's, there's things that people cannot line up on. There's things that people are worried about they're concerned about. It talks about um, the end. What's, what's going to happen? What order are things going to happen? When's it going to happen? What's it going to look like? And this is the place where Paul brings in this thing of saying, actually, what you need most of all is not God's dated plan. What's going to happen? What you need most of all is love. I'm going to pop into... Um, Chapter 5, because, you know, we start at the beginning, we go straight to the end, and then we go back and muddle our way through the middle, right? Um, but in chapter 5, if you look at, uh, at verses uh, 12, through 12 through 13, this is right at the end. He's finishing off his letter, and he says to them, We ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. So there's some issue with leadership. Maybe it's personality clashes. Maybe it's understanding clashes or opinion clashes. 
But there is, there is a difficulty in this space. And the solution is love. Now, I think it, it can be really easy to feel like, okay, so that means that we all be nice and we just pretend that our differences don't exist. We put them away and then we can all be nice in this space where we just don't talk about it. But the next verse goes on to say, we urge you brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. Love is not an avoidance of the difficulty, but an engagement in it with a heart that says, I see Christ in you, he is also in me, and we can navigate this. And I think that's just what a testimony um, to say this is what a Christian is. Often in our world, that's not how Christians' reputations unfold in the public view. This thing of how do we deal with our differences, with our difficulties, with our problems. So we have the beginning of love, which begins the movement, the identity of love, which defines what a Christian is. We have the connection of love that lets the Christian community function in a way that is pleasing to God. A passage in, um, in chapter 2 says, this is, and this is from Paul's expressing the first teaching that they brought when they came to plant the church. He says, we exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. That thing, that little phrase, walk in a manner worthy of God. We have God showing his expression of love, himself as the definition of love, in giving, in making a way, and embracing. And this is, this is what is being taught. This is what uh, Paul and um, Silvanus and Timothy have brought that has begun this church in this place to say, live a life worthy of God. It feels like a lot of pressure. I'm not there yet. I, wouldn't, I don't know if I would look at my life experience and say, here we go. Yep, I've got it. And I don't know about you, but I'm the kind of person who wants to. I love a good checklist. I like to put my checks in the boxes. And I like to say, it's done. I'm good. You know, I've achieved this. Um, in, in my personal walk with God, that's the way that I have approached the concept of love. Love is something that I need to achieve. I need to grasp. I need to have in a nice bundle and say, look, I've got it. It's here. Therefore, I'm good. The difficulty um, is that, you know, when you actually read the scripture and you see uh, the lives of others who have walked before us, alongside us, we, as you see Christ as he has expressed his love, it's not an achievement. It's not a singular. It's not a completion point. It's actually the journey. The love is the beginning of love. The love is coming to identify with the love. The love is being transformed in our relationships with one another in the love. It continues. There is movement. Now, the Thessalonians have a reputation of love. They are known as being loving in, in an exceptional way. Uh, the language that Paul uses is all kinds of emotional, heartfelt, gooey, sticky, sweet kind of language. Um, and, and it's just incredible to see his approach to that. In chapter 2, starting in verse 19, he says to the Thessalonians, For what is our hope or joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? For you are our glory and joy. 
this expression of uh, thankfulness, of rejoicing, of love um, is, is beautiful. And the Thessalonians have lived an incredible experience. Uh, um, I'm using the word expression too many times, and I need my thesaurus, but the way that, that the Thessalonians are known for their love is incredibly beautiful. Um, in, in chapter 4, we look at verse 9, and Paul says, Now, concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. It's evident, it's real, it's active, it's beautiful. This is what it's meant to be. And yet, also continuing on from there. For that indeed is what you are doing to all the brothers through Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers, to do this more and more. It's, yes, it's beautiful, it's great, this is God and evidence of him, and still also there is growth, there is continuation. This is a celebration of the way that God is transforming people and changing the world through them, but it is also a call to continue, not to stay, we have achieved, and so we can stop, but saying, how can we continue to grow? Love is also shown to be part of the preparation for things that are to come. So we've had a beginning. Uh, God began love for us. We identify with him and we begin to grow in lovingness, in lovehood, in expressions of love. And we are called to continue to grow this is also love as preparation for what is to come. And um, Thessalonians is, is quite incredible in that it, in very quick succession, addresses um, some really big and, and difficult uh, issues for the church, one of which is the end. How will things end? Um, within, within Western churches, we've also had a lot of difficulty with this and how we get along with one another when we see the end in different ways from each other in how we interpret the scriptures. But Paul gives this instruction. He says, I might begin earlier. <laughs> Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have any, anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, there is peace and security, then suddenly destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. <clears throat> but you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief for you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for the helmet, and for a helmet of hope, of salvation. It's the preparation for the unknown. We're not given the answers of this is what will happen and therefore you need to prepare like a prepper and store this amount of food or, or develop this kind of place to live. Instead, the instruction is put on the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet, the, the hope of salvation. This is how we do this unknown together. 
This is how we walk into this space of we don't know exactly what's going to come. We wrap ourselves, we clothe ourselves in the faith and love that we have been shown, that we understand, that we are continuing to grow into, and the helmet of hope. So love begins with God. We identify ourselves with it. It transforms and changes our lives. It gives us a way to live in relationship with each other. And as we grow in it, it completely redefines us as people, as opposed to being an attribute, like someone has a sense of humor or um, someone has an interesting accent. It is not an attribute. It's actually a redefining and regrowing of who we are as people within ourselves, our relationship to God, amongst each other, and how we connect to the world that is beyond our immediate walls. It redefines our nature. This is what God's called us to when he calls us to love. Be willing to be completely redefined and reformed as you grow in me. So, as a community, um, as was mentioned earlier, we have a reputation in our community of being um, people that love. This is evidence of God at work in us. This is beautiful. This is um, that which is rejoiced over uh, as we look at those who brought the gospel amongst us. And now we don't necessarily have the tidy timeline that the Thessalonians had of, you know, no gospel and then planting the church in the beginning. Maybe theirs wasn't even that tidy and that's my interpretation through the text. But we've, we've all come to be in this relationship with God um, and that has been brought and that rejoicing of God's presence um, and the evidence of his movement among us is a very real and beautiful thing. And yet we also are called to continue to grow, to not say, all right, we did it, we're good, we're done now. We can stop seeking to learn and seeking to exercise amongst ourselves and in our community this love. We are continuing to grow, to strive. So as we finish today, I would like to ask you three questions. And I'd like you to take these three questions with you and ask yourself over the coming week to think about these and see what you come up with. First of all, how has the love of God formed you? How has it formed you? What are the things about you that have come because of the love of God in your life. Second one, how is this love shown through your life now? How is it expressed? Where are you seeing it come out? Relationships, community, work, parenting, siblings, family, those you meet. And third, how are you seeking to grow in love? Where is the space that you've made to say, God, I need growth. Show me what you would have for me. So take those with you. Think on it. Allow God to make that space in your life. And if you have a chance, talk with someone about it. Process these things together. Love is not something we do in isolation. Is something we do in community. So as we close, we've got a benediction, and then we can have time to visit and have coffee together. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen, for he who calls you is faithful. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you now and forevermore. Amen.